things about me? Um, my next, our next guest, um, after this roast, I think there should be a benefit for her. Uh, <laughs> pardon me? No, there should be a benefit for her because she's a survivor. <laughs> Alan may have been in the shit in Vietnam, uh, but uh, my next guest, uh, some of you know, many of you know, Letty Teague, uh, is the only woman to survive a relationship with Alan. In marriage, I should say, in marriage. Um, she lived to tell the tale. She may tell some of it tonight. Um, but uh, I kid. Uh, but Alan doesn't. Uh, uh, Letty uh, was recently married to Roger. Um, and Alan, uh, to his good credit, and uh, is remained great friends with Letty, obviously. Uh, and he was, um, was, he, was he the groom, uh, the, the best man? or Good groom emeritus. <laughs> Groom Emeritus, and Alan uh, gave a toast uh, to the new couple, the happy bride and groom. Uh, and to, I, let me, I want to get it right, so I'll quote it. He said, here's to two people I love, and one I get along with. <laughs> He's still got good stuff. So anyway, please. Welcome her and, and, and show her the love because, as I said, she's a vibrant lady. Woo! Thank you. Um, before I say what I'm going to say, um, I have to. I was just telling Drew that uh, on riffing off of Alan's cheapness, which I actually am not going to address, believe it or not. But it was really thanks to Alan that. Uh, um, a friend of, uh, of mine and of Alan's is getting married um, very soon because he met his um, his bride to be in Corton. She was uh, behind the bar, and my our friend had gone there for a drink beforehand because he said, "You know, I'm having dinner with Alan and Letty, and I know Alan's too cheap to buy more than one bottle of wine, so I have to drink first. And there was the bride to be behind the bar. So, um, he's responsible for a few happy endings. Um, well, I've known Alan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've known Alan Richmond for more than 20 years, um, which is something that probably a, a number of you in this, this room can say, but um, I was also married to Alan Richmond for more than 12 years, which is something that no one, no one else in the world can say. <laughs> in other words, I have a unique perspective on the man that we're honoring tonight. Um, Alan actually told me he, wouldn't, he didn't mind if I said some really mean things about him, because um, that's what a roast is about, after all. And, um, and if you followed Alan's career at all, you know that there are plenty of people who have said plenty of mean things about Alan over the years, um, just to name a few. Steven Seagal, Pino Longo, Sharon Stone, Robert De Niro, and of course one of my roasters here tonight. Um, but I'm not interested in doing what's already been done. Um, I'd rather actually talk about how often Alan has been wrong. Um, I am his ex-wife, after all. Right, if you know Alan, and, and if you're here tonight, it's safe to assume you do, um, then you know how important it is for Alan to be right. Alan's is the only point of view that matters, and, and according to Alan, of course, he's never wrong. Um, but in fact, Alan has been wrong repeatedly over the years, and I'm about to tell you about some very important things Alan has been wrong about. Um, for example, Alan said, I'm never going to win a James Beer Award. He said that 20 times. Yeah. He's been wrong 15 of those times. Yeah. I remember the very first time that Alan said this particular thing. I think it was a, the very first time there were, there were actually Beer Journalism Awards. It was like 1992, 93, and the awards took place, I think it was at Pierre Hotel. Um, but of course, for Alan, it could have been anywhere because he had his head on the table the entire time. He didn't want to hear when his name wasn't announced. Um, um, but in fact, Gail Green, his fellow nominee, heard his name announced, and she actually stormed out the door, which I guess Alan wasn't the only one who was wrong that night. <laughs> um, Alan, also, Alan also maintained he was not television material. He said, I sound too Jewish. I have this really Jewish voice. And I thought, 
does that know the difference between television and radio? Like, um, but never mind. Anyway, Alan, Alan ended up the host of a, of a show, I don't know if any of you remember, it was on the Food Network in the, in the mid-1990s. It was called TV Diners and later called Dining Around. And his co-host was this absolutely gorgeous uh, former model and socialite named Nina Griscom, um, who they called the first Food Network babe. Um, they actually called the show also Beauty and the Beast. But... <laughs> Now, Alan thought that nobody watched their show, though. He, um, he was wrong about that, too. Um, because when Alan and I first moved to Westchester, um, uh, and more on that later, um, <laughs> one of the first things we did when we moved into our house, of course, was set off the alarm in the middle of the night. And, uh, and so when Alan opened the door to the policeman, he was in, and Alan was in his underwear, and the policeman's first words were, You're Alan Richmond from the Food Network! <laughs> um, the same thing actually happened when we, when we were stopped by a policeman in Queens um, when we had a burned-out taillight. The policeman said, Wait a minute, you're that guy from the Food Network. So, and he didn't make Alan pay the ticket. Um, so if you're wondering who's watching Alan and Nina all those years, the answer is easy, the police. <laughs> uh, and by the way, their, their show ran four years, which is incredible you think about it. That's actually two years more than the Galloping Gourmet and the same amount of time as the Brady Bunch. So, uh, but there were no residuals, alas. Um, I don't know that, so, as my divorce attorney knows. Um, <laughs> When he told Sonny Mehta, who was then the head of Random House, that he could write a funny book about Queens. Um, this was back in, in 1995, and it was actually Sonny Mehta's idea. Um, he wanted a funny book about Queens, and he thought, well, since Alan's a funny guy, he can write a funny book about Queens. Never mind that that has never been done. Um, but Alan and I, so we moved out of the, our, our fabulous Upper West Side apartment to Queens, um, where we lived for a year and nine months. Um, Alan wrote half of the book. And when he turned it into his editor, because Sonny Mehta by then had completely forgotten that he'd ever signed you know, this project, um, his editor, the editor turned out, didn't want a funny book on Queens. And in fact, he thought Alan made the entire thing up. He said, for some reason, he didn't think it was even remotely possible that Alan and I had chased down a garbage truck at 2 o'clock in the morning in a Datsun station wagon that once belonged to David Granger, the editor-in-chief of Esquire. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> I can tell you more of that and more of the true funny stories that were in the book, but I actually only have a few minutes left. Um, but I will tell you, we did catch the truck, and there still isn't a funny book about Queens. No. Um, but Alan and I moved to Westchester um, right after Queens, and uh, never mind, Alan said he would never live in the suburbs. He was wrong about that, too. Um, and it's actually, of course, as we know from Eric, it's, he still lives in that mansion, um, which I do not. Um, and, <laughs> He lives next door to a real Viennese psychoanalyst named Doris. I mean, some things are so perfect you can't make them up. No. Um, Doris told me she wouldn't go on the record, though, about with any professional assessments of Alan. Um, but she did say that, yes, Alan was neurotic, um, which I felt pretty good about until she said, well, you know, Letty, you're neurotic, too. Um, she, said, she said, actually, she said, Alan is, is, is neurotic, everyone's neurotic, I'm, you know, I'm neurotic. But she said, although Alan is a lot less neurotic than he pretends to be. And all I can say is, Alan, does Doris know about the time you almost strangled a man on the Metro North train? <laughs> I could tell you many, many more stories about Alan, but my time is nearly up. But there is just one last very important thing um, that Alan Richmond is wrong about. Um, Alan Richmond believes that writing is a profession of unhappiness. It's something he said to me over and over and over again. But looking around the room tonight, I have to tell you, Alan, you're wrong again. Your writing has brought us all so much happiness and so much love. Mm. Lady, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, as I said, there'll be a benefit for her later. <laughs> a benefit. 